Hello everybody, welcome to my video, my name's Jamie, born this game, today we do an unboxing video. Now I bought this three weeks ago, this contains a monster joystick, but this time for the C32. And it's going to be my second. This is the first one I bought. I bought it about a year ago. It's brilliant. Absolutely superb. Amazingly, I've not used it as much as I thought I would. Because I really do like using the Zipstick joystick. It's my favourite joystick of all time. But on the CD32, completely, utterly different. Now, I've owned two CD32s for a very long time. And I'm sure I'm safe to say this. But it is my own personal opinion, of course. The control pads on the CD32 are horrendous. There's not many games I can play well on the CD32, which is why sometimes I plug in a zipstick. But of course, being on the CD32, some games you need more than one button. And that's where this big bad boy comes in. Now, like the other joystick, we've also got to put it together, but of course, it's going to take a little bit more time to a lot more buttons. So I'm going to set it up now, and we're going to fire up some games and see how it plays with a CD32. Anyway. Side front and back panels, we've got the buttons, and we've got the cables and the port, and then the loose bits, bobs, and ends, also known as screws, nuts, bolts, and washers. Now, this contains zero soldering, no soldering whatsoever. Now, I believe the only tools you need is a screwdriver, a spanner or adjustable spanner, and maybe even a pair of pliers, and that is it. But anyway, like these other joysticks, this can be mounted on the left or the right side, whatever the case may be. But anyway, Jamie, the chit chat, let's get cracking. There we go, superb. Now I know what you're thinking, yes you are correct, it is the wrong way round, but that's the way I want it to be. So anyway, let's try some games out. There we go, Amiga C32, still looks absolutely tremendous, sounds great too. Let's try a few games at random and see how this joystick performs. There we go, Bob and Sticks, I've played this for a while, brilliant game, absolutely superb, but yeah, I've never actually finished it before, core design. Okay, so the game is Bub and Sticks, a 2D subscribe platform game for Mega Drive Genesis, Amiga, Amiga CD32, developed and released by Core Design. The Genesis version was released by Tengen in the United States and featured a promotional time with a bubblicious bubblegum brand. And it's brilliant, absolutely superb. Not an overly long game, five levels, but it's very puzzly. The player controls Bubba, a redneck character who is accompanied by a sentient stick named Sticks. Sticks can be used in various ways to help Bubba defeat enemies and get past difficult obstacles. For instance, sticks can be thrust into a hole inside of a wall to allow Bubba to climb up higher. They can throw it in the air and also swing away like a swing in a baseball bat. It's brilliant. But yeah, level 3 is the furthest I've got. This is level 1. Here you'll find Bubba and sticks stuck in the depths of an alien forest. Pay attention to the vegetation unless it bites. Watch out for Waldo, he's starting to appear. Waldo is the main villain in this game. There you go, brilliant. Now the game's protagonist started out as a long-necked alien that went through several alterations until developers settled on Bubba. And you also bounce, you have an energy bar. But yeah, never finished it. One day I would love to finish this game. But anyway, you can throw your stick in the air as well, which is great because some enemies are airborne. You also use it on rocks. 
This game has music and sound effects together, and this CD32 version does have additional music to the original version. Now, this is not really testing the full potential of this monster joystick, because this joystick has seven buttons. But it's given me the opportunity to try it out as a two-button joystick. And it's performing very, very well. But over the course of this video, we'll try out more games that need more buttons. So we'll twist it to the limit for this one. There we go. Now, can I ever hit up close? We'll do it from a distance. And sometimes you have to, in this case, stop an argument. Throw a stick to stop an argument. In the old days, that caused quite an issue. Get too close and they'll stop. And when they stop, you can't throw it. We can, but it won't capture it. Okay, you walk off to the edge. Now, don't die if you fall from a great big height. But you do die, if you, believe it or not, you take six hits. And that Wardo character will appear throughout the game. And sometimes he's unavoidable. And in this level, he is unavoidable. You have to take damage at the end of this level. Right. Now, I love this level. It's brilliant. I love the look of it. I love all the eyes that are looking at you when you're not looking at them. And when you turn around, they close. It's a really nice touch to this game. But some trees do walk, and some you do need very much so, including this one. So you need the help of a trunk and also a stick. There you go. Hit that. Great sound effects. Right, so jump on the boulder. And then we have something to jump onto, but now we have to hit it again. In the old days, again, I didn't know you could do that. So I was always jumping onto a spike. Unless you time it very, very well with a jump. Alright, enemy in the air. Throwing what seem to be Coke cans. Hit him and explodes. Right, I believe this is the end of the level. It's not a long level, but you have to take damage here. There we go, that takes you to the next level. But anyway, it's a superb game. Bubble and sticks. There we go, next on the list, how about a little bit of All-Terrain Racer? Again, own it as a box. Let's see how this joystick performs with a racing game. Okay, this is All-Terrain Racer. I've played it for years. Great game by Team 17. Now, this game I bought in the old days. Bought it from the HMV. But this is the battle mode. But again, it's not really, you know, testing out the full use of this joystick. This joystick has six buttons and one start button. This game, all you need is one button. And they can fire missiles and homing missiles. That's done by pressing up. It's a brilliant game. Great to go back to it from time to time, but yeah, it's difficult. Now, this one is done on the point system. Now, the default setting is first to 20 points, but actually decreased it from 20 to 10. Now, you earn points by finishing the lap in first place. You earn a single point. Picking up a star gives you a point. And also, the most likely, or most well-known, should we say, is getting one screen ahead of the opponent. Every time you do, the opponent is then brought back in play, but the person winning that point gets another point. And I've reduced it from 20 to 10, so first to 10 wins the race. They can pick up additional skill, pick up additional items. The trouble is you get damage in this game, and if you take much, too much damage it will slow you down. It's not good if you're in a battle, but you can pick up a shield which will improve all your damage. Back to its original state. Picking up an arrow is, adds instant acceleration. Also improve your grip and your speed by picking up a G or an S. Acceleration is A. Uh, also reverse the player's control, you want to feel mean, and also you can also lay mines. At the moment I've got six, and the computer has got six. Don't slide on the all stick, don't go into water, it will slow you down. There's also a magnet which attracts the two players together, so it's good if you're far behind. Anyway, seven, six. A really bad football score. Anyway, so much advertisement in this game of other Team 17 games, including body blows, quack, Project X, Super Frog, and even Arcade Pool. I think I've got all box versions of all those games apart from Arcade Pool. Right, we picked up some good icons there. It means we can be a lot more faster. Better. There we go. I bet again, this is performing really, really well, this joystick. But we need to try a few more games out where we need more buttons. There we go, I'm happy with that. There we go, tremendous game. Why not? A little bit of IK Plus. I have to admit, the C32 version is no different to the original version. They could have added so much more to it, but they didn't. But the problem with that version, but it's my own personal opinion, of course, the controller. Playing this game with a control pad is not a fun experience, especially with the bonus sections. But anyway, let's try it out on the monster joystick. Okay, International Quality Plus, also abbreviated since it's IK Plus, Barton Fighting Video Game, published in 1987 by System 3. Originally for the C64 and the CPC and ZX Spectrum, it's since been ported to a number of other platforms. The Combo 64 version was released in the US under the title of Crop and Chop. Brilliant game, absolutely love it. Now, this game on a 
CD32 control pad is absolutely horrendous. Not so bad with the fighting sections, but the bonus sections, it's a nightmare. So we'll see how we do. But yeah, this is performing really, really well. Again, it's a brilliant joystick, really pleased with it. Yes, it's a lot of money, but it's money well spent. I do feel a lot to change about it, as I'm going to build it myself. The nice one's already built. There we go, you can't get it all your own way. Now again, it's not testing out the joystick's full potential, because again, this game just doesn't even just one single button. But we do have a time limit. Now I am white, also we have blue and red. The rules are simple. Don't come last. Come okay, last. bonus day. The 16-bit version of the game was released in 1988 for the Atari ST and Amiga home computers. Except for the music, which was done by Dave Lau, the Atari ST version was done entirely by Archie McLean. He used the bitmap editor in the Chrome to draw backgrounds, graphics and sprites. Development took six months. Something took the, the Amiga just took seven days, thanks to the cleans, avoiding operating system calls as much as possible. Right, we've got to try and deflect the ball. 100 points to deflect each ball. Now you can do it in one, possibly seven. Which you've heard right, you can actually also hit it with the side of your shield and it's standing for the basic projects. Only four will do that. Do it this way, it's easier. Now it starts off slow, but it does pick up some speed very quickly. It's brilliant, it's performing really, really well. Now, of course, even heads are prone to the mess. One hit and you result in falling flat on your face. You want to put it on your back. Anyway, it's brilliant. This game is tremendous. It looks fantastic, plays well, and it's got some really, really nice touches. Of course, it's got really many keys to press, including the T, which makes your trousers fall down. <laughs> Not in here, though. You can't do it in the screen. Again, only forward in that. Next up, skeleton crew. This one, you definitely do need more than one button. This is where, hopefully, this is going to pass with flying colours. Okay, this other game is the Skeleton Crew, another superb game by Call Design, which I've never finished. Now this one, we do need more than two buttons. We need four. But luckily, we have four now. And this is so much more comfortable. It really is. A lot better than playing on a control pad. Now we need four buttons. You press the red button to rotate your waist clockwise. Blue rotates your waist anti-clockwise. Now if you press blue and red down together, you'll lock your waist in one direction. And you can keep it there. You keep moving around and you stay far in that direction. It's a really, really nice thing for this game. And it's so much more comfortable with this joystick. It's brilliant. And there's three, ca three characters in this game. We get Rib, Joint, and Spine. Now I'm playing as Spine, who is the leader of the Skeleton crew, and the oldest too. Now I love the way it looks, I love the way it plays. But on a two-button joystick, it's going to be so... I don't think it's possible on a two-button joystick. I'm not sure. I've never actually tried. I've only played this on the CD32 before. But anyway, in the times I've played this game, I haven't got overly far. Not many boss battles. In fact, the first one is here. It doesn't appear very early on in the game. And what we're going to try and do is lock your bullets in the forward direction by pressing two buttons down at the same time. And keep it there, whenever you can. Now, you've got to try and shoot it in both of these ear holes. Once one of them has been shot off, it will start to smoke. And then you move over to the side, but keep shooting forwards. And he shoots from his eyeballs, but also he shoots from his chin. And getting hit by that is definitely going to be a deadly experience. The spine. Now, when you're rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise, it's almost like their waist is not joined to their torso. But anyway, one ear hole has been shot off. We've got to focus on the other one now. There we go, boom power, he's smoking. Now, you press the green button to do a very, very... Short jump. It's not a big, big jump at all, but you do need it from time to time. And then you press yellow to switch between weapons. You have two weapons. Where do you get more than that? I'm not sure. I've never seen more than two. But one of them is like a blaster. This is what I tend to use the most. But you also do get a bomb, which is brilliant, especially if there's a lot of enemies nearby. And a lot of times there are, because enemies will keep on spawning. They can pick up this dual item, but some of them you have to break, break open from these, some sort of capsule, so blast your way through. But you don't want to be standing around for too long. We do have an energy bar and we have three lives. They don't get many lives in this game. I don't think you can find many, but I'm sure there are some from time to time. But levels can be quite long, but they are definitely, definitely challenging. But yeah, keep moving around. And once you've locked it in one direction, you can move around in any direction and keep firing. It's basically like a subjective inspection. There's not many games like this which I can do. There are some very, very difficult ones out there, but these bombs are brilliant when you want to try and shoot something like that, which will deactivate a laser, allowing you to progress further on. Anyway, that will do. Otherwise, you can't progress through here. So... But yeah, the other characters... Whip is the only female in this game. And... Joint 
is the slowest character, but he does have the best weapon. Right, okay, the exit is just nearby. However, energy is rather bad, I have to admit. We need to jump. We blast our way through. But yeah, I love the music. He's superb. Right, jump. Jump. We have the right weapon for the job. Let's blast our way through. There you go, just make an entrance. There you go, boom, pow. That's for that. Brilliant. Performing really, really well. There you go. Tremendous game, Lost Vikings. Love this game. Do you have it on the Amiga as well? Now this one, you do need a fully functioning keyboard. And of course, the Amigas do have a fully functioning keyboard. Now I do have a keyboard for the CD32, but I'm not going to be using it today. We're going to be using this. Now it's going to take us to get used to, because this game has a lot of control. Hopefully we've got more enough buttons to get the job done. But anyway, let's see how we do Lost Vikings. Okay, so the game is Lost Vikings, a puzzle platform video game developed by Silicon and Synapse, now Blizzard Entertainment and published by Interplay. It was originally released for the SNES in 1993, then subsequently released for the Amiga, Amiga CD32, MS-DOS and Sega Mega Drive Genesis. The Sega Mega Drive Genesis version contains five stages not present in the other versions of the game and can also be played up to three players simultaneously. Blizzard re-released the game for the Game Boy Advance in 2003, and in 2014 the game was added to the Battle.net as a free download emulated through DOSBox. There we go, not too shabby at all, what are we doing here? I don't know. Will you guys just shut up and follow me? There you go. Okay, level 2, I have to admit this is performing really, really well with this joystick, it's so much easier. Right, three Vikings, Eric the Swift, Balog the Fierce, and Olaf the Stout get kidnapped by the Tomata, Emperor of the Alien Kryptonian Empire of the Intergalactic Zoo. They are able to escape the ship, but get lost in various periods of time. They must traverse various bizarre locations and eventually confront and defeat the Tomata to find their way home. Right, press the button. Of course, each Viking has their own skills. If you pick up items, they can also give items to other Vikings. Now this one is the Fierce. Now he is Fierce because he's loaded onto the teeth with a bow and arrow and also a sword. Now this one is Eric. Now Eric can run very fast and also he's the only one that can jump. But he can also break walls with his helmet. Yes he can, run at a distance and he can break it with his hat. Right, now this one is the Olaf the Stout. Now you know Peter Sharp is knife in the jaw, you know what his skill is. He can block, a bit like a blocker in Lemmings. Not only can he block, he can also glide because then these Vikings can't fall from great big distances, it's going to hurt them. But you can replenish your energy with fruit. Because each Viking has three hits. Take one more and they die, and you've got to get all of them to the exit. Right, we need to switch to the Fierce. We need to use arrows. Press blue to fire an arrow. You can press buttons at a distance. Right, now if he's got the bomb, we're going to take him over to this computer. We've got to blow it up with our bombs. Press that one, drop it on it, and move out of the way. And that'll deactivate all the lasers. Which is great, because it's exactly what we need to do. So put them all onto the pad at once and press up or down to go up or down, whatever the case may be. Now we're going to need the shield. Luckily there is a Viking that has a shield. He can block any bullet with his shield, but he cannot attack with it. But there we go. Now press this button with the green and activate it and it'll start gliding through the air. Look how happy he is. Now the screen will eventually go back to its normal colour. But there we go. Enemies will not penetrate through that shield, but it will, it will stay there and keep it at bay. Now we need the fierce. There we go. They can either attack with his bow and arrows or attack with a sword. Sword is short range. Of course it is. Bow and arrow is long range. Right. We can do long range to stay far. There we go. Right. The third and final. Get him to the destination. But yes, he is good because he can jump. And can jump a very, very big distance. And he can run a very, very fast speeds. Right. Okay. So again, we need the shield die. Superb. Now, of course, there was a sequel to this game. But I've never actually played it. So we need to block the bullets. There we go. And this is a case of getting all there safely. Three hits it can take. Right, we need your shield again, but first let's get this one safe and out of the dangers. At the moment there's plenty of dangers around, but we have the right Viking for the drop. There you go, he's picking his nose, but there we go, we need your shield once again. There you go, boom, boom, pow. Uh, switch and move over. Get them all to the exit at the same time. Again, we're going to need your shield nearby, mate. So get them all safely, and then move on again. But yes, brilliant game. I haven't got overly far, I have to admit. But it is a really, really good game. But there we go. This joystick is performing so well. It really is so much easier than using the keyboards. There you go. Brilliant. On we go. We need the fierce one again. There you go. 
Now these enemies cannot climb ladders. There you go, but I can shoot with an arrow. There we go, there's one down, two to go. Press the button. Make sure you do it in the right order. You'll be shot in the back. You need a shield to prevent your enemies from getting shot in the front or the back, whatever the case may be. So, on we go. Be quick about it. There you go. This choice is really, really good. Money well spent. There you go. Stick close and you will lead it to the way. There we go. Another superb game. This one I have completed many, many times. Super Stardust. Bought it from HMV in the old days. Again, not easy to play on a controller, but I have done it on this one. But on this game, I always configurate the joypads. So it's a great way to assign the way you want it to be. And this is what I tend to do. Red for fire, up for thrust. I do blue for shield, left for left, right for light, green for selector, play for pause, and break in yellow. And that's a good way of finding out if you've lined all the connectors to the right buttons correctly. There we go. Okay, final game of this video. This is Super Stardust, a 1904 game developed by Bloodhouse, published for the Amiga AGA, as well as the Amiga CD32 by Team 17. The game was ranked the 26th best game of all time by Amiga Power. The CD32 version features CDDA soundtrack composed by Nicholas Rehnquist and Nico Ryman. The game was ported to PC under the name of Super Stardust 96. Super Stardust is a sequel to Stardust. And it's absolutely brilliant. We've always been a big fan of this game. Okay, next level, we've got 60 seconds on the clock. Not a lot, really, but what needs to be done? An enhanced remake titled Super Stardust HD was released in 2007 for the PlayStation 3 and 2008 for the PlayStation Portable and available as a download from the European US PlayStation Store. And the next sequel was Super Stardust Delta, released for the PlayStation Vita. I have to admit, I have got the PlayStation 3 version. I've played it absolute death. I have completed it many, many times. But yeah, I haven't played the Super Stardust Delta, but it was one I played on VR. Now, whether it's actually a different one altogether, I'm not sure. But yeah, I didn't play it for very long, but unfortunately, I felt a bit sick. It's like nothing away from the game, but unfortunately, my brain wasn't adapted to the chain of picking, moving around. But yeah, it was brilliant. But unfortunately, I couldn't do it. Quite surprising for someone like me, but yeah. VR ain't for me, maybe not yet anyway, maybe in the future my brain will adapt to it, but I don't know. Or we'll buy it first, we'll have the system first. But anyway, we've got to upgrade this freeway. Now, the freeway is good, but it's very, very short range, but you can get another weapon called a bouncer, which is so much better. The bullets go so much further, they go to full length of the screen. And also, flamer is also a very, very good weapon as well. There are some bad ones, the burster, or fire with the burster, not a good weapon. We need some energy, I've got it. Right, seven seconds remain. Now, anything that's still on the screen when you run out of time will turn into enemies. Okay, final level, and then the boss will arrive on the scene. Now, this one has an additional enemy called the Fire Spiller. Now, we're actually upgrading the bouncer to its full potential, so now it's going to fall into the screen. And we will shoot from one side of the screen to the other side. Brilliant. Right, here comes the alarm. There's the Fire Spiller. Now, it rotates, and when it rotates, it starts to fire. Now this joystick is absolutely superb. Now, I, I'm sure I'm not alone, but I might be, I don't know. But the controllers on the C32 are not the greatest. The first one I actually quite liked, until the point when it started to play up. Now inside the traditional pad are four plastic clips. But over the course of time, it's happened to me a few times in the past, they will snap. If one snaps, yeah, you should be okay. Two, mm, three, you're risking it for a biscuit. But once all four of them snap, it's going to be no good to you. Now, I have fixed it before, but once it gets to that point, then the original pad will start to rotate. Hey, it's no good. Now, I do have the other one, the Competition Pro. It's good, it's definitely better, but it's far too flimsy. But I'm not a fan of these pads, but this is a brilliant alternative. Yes, it's a lot of money, but it's worth every penny. Now, I have put the directional stick and the buttons on the other way round. It works for me. It's comfortable for me. Brilliant. Okay, initiating warp sequence. Navigate through asteroids and minefields to reach the end of the tunnel leading to the second world. If shot, the golden asteroids leave power up behind, so aim carefully. Detected the animal vessels is one, and it's a bummer. Okay, tunnel time. Absolutely superb. When I saw this in the old days for the first time, it absolutely blew me away. And the first game has them as well, but the first game is so much more easier. But anyway, let's try and get through it. The next generation reviewer gave it a 1 out of 5 stars. She's been criticised its nature as an asteroid's clone. Though he acknowledged the graphics are so much more complex, the music is a bonus, and the power had up a lot of spice. 
Now, we just destroyed the bomber. Now, you can destroy the asteroids. That is all. Nothing else you can destroy here. Just the void at all costs. Now, you destroy an asteroid, you get additional point power. You destroy a golden one, and you get additional energy, which you've got to collect after you've blown up the asteroid. But anyway, at the top right corner of the screen, we have a time, which basically just lasts that time. Now, you don't have a shield here, just energy. Now, if you do take a hit, you will take damage. But if you get you absolutely 100% head on, it's really an instant kill. All your energy can drain in one slam. So, just keep moving around. There we go, give them power. Absolutely brilliant. Cue the fireworks display. Congratulations, tunnel sequence of rock destroyed, total score. Brilliant. Okay, final thoughts, Jamie. Do you like this joystick? Yes, I do, I do, I really, really do. However, there's one thing I want to change. Yes, I'm doing it already, but only one. It's not all bad, though, but it's my own personal opinion. If you're going to spend this sort of money, and it wasn't cheap, but it's money well spent, it'd be nice if it arrived fully built. But, if it did arrive fully built, I wouldn't have to change it anyway, because I want that to be there, and those to be there. I know what you're thinking, you're thinking it right now, and you are absolutely correct. That's the way it should be. But we've got to try and make it easy for ourselves and comfortable for ourselves. And for me, it'd be more comfortable the other way around. This is the Zip Tip Joystick. I've used it absolutely loads. I've got about five in my collection. And I can control the stick with the right and the button with my left. So that's what I wanted for this. So yes, if you want it the right way around, then do it. It's comfortable for you. This is comfortable for me. Also, <laughs> also, there's been a few times where some of these buttons were pressed, even though I didn't actually press it. So some of them were very sensitive. The start button, yeah, can be a bit of an issue, but it's not all bad. And also, yes, it is big, it's bulky, and sometimes it is quite sharp, but it's got to take some getting used to. These two buttons here on the CD32 pads are normally there and there. But can you imagine if they were there using this great big massive thing? It'd be a nightmare. So it takes some getting used to. But it's only minor things. But anyway, it's brilliant. I absolutely love it. But yeah, if you want to use it correctly, then do it correctly. It would be simple to do it correctly. But if you want to make it comfortable with yourself, then do it that way. But anyway, it's my own personal opinion, of course. But Jamie, you're talking too much. But anyway, this is Jamie from Wolves Games. Please like the copy, share, please subscribe to my channel, Facebook fan page, please subscribe to Twitch. To sub in more just games, you find it fairly easy. Please remember to use the bell icon and notify you visit. And of course, it is. <laughs> well, in this sort of video, if you want to play some cheats, have a big bacon and live streams on a Friday night, you can turn on it for. If you understood that, you're brilliant. But anyway, until next time, take it easy. Ciao, bye. See ya. <laughs> There you go. Brilliant. Unfortunately, green screen has eliminated one of the buttons. Right, um... For Mega Drive Genesis and Amiga and CD32, developed by and released by... Mega Drive Genesis, Amiga, Amiga CD2... Jamie. This one doesn't have an escape key for some reason. I don't think it does. Uh, amazingly, I've got six buttons plus the start button on the side. When I make a mistake, None of these quits the game. I don't think this game has a quit option. So you either kill yourself three times or reset the computer. Game. But yeah, it's brilliant. Now this isn't really taking out this. The Genesis version was released by Tengen for the United States and features a promotional time with the bubblicious bubblegum brand. <laughs> yay, yay, yay! Do you know what? Right, I've plugged in my keyboards. Now, every time I make a mistake, I didn't know how to quit, because I don't think you can do it on this controller. Right, ah, oh, so, oh, bless, bless, bless. Forest. Pay attention to the vegetation, unless it bites. But watch out for the wall, though. He's certainly... Okay, so the game is Bub and Sticks, a 2D side-scrolling platform game for the Mega Drive Genesis, Amiga and CD32, released and published by... No. Jamie, read the paperwork. The paper that you've just spent about five minutes writing down. Read it, mate. Read it. Four. Not many levels. Six, I think. Is it six or five? It's five. Right. Start again. <laughs> and he's already appeared once already. And he's the main villain in this game. Now watch out for anything that has teeth. They can also throw enemy, throw enemies in the air, I was going to say. No, kill enemies in the air. Time. The Genesis version was released by Tenjin in the United States and featured a promotional time with a bobacious, bubblous, bu 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 So be bees, lots of bees, bubblacious bubblegum brands. Look at those. 
during the making of this video, unfortunately, my TV has not turned itself off once today. Michael Gibbs is going to be furious. <laughs> okay, so the game is Bob and Sticks, a 2D side-scrolling platform game for the Mega Drive Genesis and Mega 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 32, which released and... What is that, Jamie? What is that?